look at my kitchen. Sweetheart, what are you doing? Oh, you're always making messes. Let me see your hands. Okay, go wash up. Stay in your room. You make a mess out of everything you touch. Try say something. I thought we were safe. You know, you, you, you had protection. When did this happen? How far along are you? Twelve weeks? I don't know, twelve or thirteen? Oh. Which means I'm having this baby in December. <laughs> I'm gonna be going into my spring semester with a baby. Charlie, I'm 20. I don't know how to be a mom. Do you even want to think about options? I know I don't want to mess up some poor kid's life. You're not going to mess anything up. All right, that's your mom talking. But we already screwed up the plan. This wasn't supposed to happen first. We're supposed to get married. We're supposed to, to have a few years together, you know? Oh my gosh, my mom's going to kill me. Maybe when I tell her, she's never going to speak to me again. Do you want to keep this baby? Only if it's a boy. What? Babe. Listen, I'm kidding. Give, come here. Give me your hands. Listen. Whew. Okay. Look at me. Look at me. Hey, hey. Okay. This is not the worst thing that can happen, you know? I'm, 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 I'm halfway through my 20s. I think I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah, I do. And I think you're ready, too. We can do this. We got this. OK? <laughs> when I tell my mom that I'm having a baby and we're not married, she's, <laughs> my parents are not going to be happy with me. OK. Well, let's do that. Then I, I wasn't. No, I, I promise I wasn't trying to talk you into anything. I know, but I'm serious. Let's get married right now. Justice of the peace. <laughs> Come on. What about a wedding? My poor mother has been planning the thing since before I was born. I, babe, I know, and but truthfully, I feel like we're kind of past that now, right? I mean, we, you, we're having a baby. <laughs> And we gotta do it right. No, I know. You're right. You're right. So. But you haven't even proposed yet. We can't just go to the courthouse. There's a lot of girls. Will you marry me? Charlie, I love you. I love you. You don't have to rush into I'm it. I'm not. I'm, I got things a little out of order. And I realized that, but I'm. I'll be right back. Babe, babe. How are you? live only for your happiness. For your love, I would give my last breath. Not here. As long as I live, I will love you. I promise you this. There is nothing I wouldn't give from this moment on. Ali, will you marry me? Getting yourself into. Are you saying yes? <laughs> yes, yes, I'll marry you. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, okay, all right. Oh, you, baby, you, you, we don't this have to put that great. on. It's gonna be great. <laughs> um, you're insane. I'm marrying. Okay, don't a, get, a just crazy don't get person. too attached to that because that's <laughs> gonna replace that soon.
really do love you. I really do love you too. But what? Did did you just propose the Shania Twain lyrics? Yes, yes, I did. <laughs> but you can't take it back now. It's too late. She said yes, everybody. No, you guys. <laughs> Sure is. Sorry about the scare. You have a nice sized little boy. <gasps> and you do? Uh, the doctor says eight weeks, but I think he'll come early. Every first time mama thinks they're gonna deliver early. They're like, there's no way I can get any bigger than I already am. But they do. Really? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. <sighs> the scare just made me realize how much I really do want him here. Yeah, there's nothing like the first time you see that baby. Oh, you have kids? Uh-huh. How many? I have two. I just gave birth to my second. A few months ago. Oh. <laughs> I do want him to be here, but then at the same time, I don't know what to do when he does get here, you know? And more than anything, I just don't want to... Honey, you don't have to be afraid of a child. You're going to be a great mom. You're going to mess up, yes. All you got to do is love him and put the fear of God in him as they grow. I don't know what it is about motherhood that just has me so, I don't know, so I can kiss myself. I just, I mean, I, I know I need to get diapers and we need to finish safe proof the house because we're not done with that yet, but. I say you need Jesus more than all that stuff. Do you go to church? I, I did when I was younger, but you know, it's, it's been a while. Tell you what, tell your husband that your new friend Teresa invited you to church. Give me a call and tell me what he says. Yeah. Um, okay. All right. <laughs> Teresa. Why don't you finish getting cleaned up, take your time, and you better not forget to call me. you're whining, I'm gonna leave you here at the library. That poor my own. That's one. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Did you get the books? Yes, you're first? Yeah. How exciting. <laughs> you make it look so easy. <laughs> yeah, well, it isn't. James, grab your sister's hand. Stop by the front door, please. But it's worth it. God gives us grace and strength, and each child is a blessing. You enjoy yours. Thank you. I will. All right, kids. Inside voices. So I feel like you got enough diapers for three babies. Is this something you're not telling me right now? No. No? We just okay. have to be prepared. This is a living human being we're having here. Yeah, it's a, it's a baby. You know, we're not the first people to be parents. Thing eats and sleeps and then pees and poops for the first year. That's about it, right? <laughs> Allie, we got this thing outnumbered. It's like basketball, right? There's two of us. We're big people, two grown-ups against one little bitty baby. We got this. Does it not scare you at all to be a parent? Nope. Not really. Okay, maybe a little bit. But I figure it'd just come naturally, you know? We'll roll with it. I just don't want to turn out like my mom. What if I screw up my kid? You are not your mom. You never will be, and besides, I like how you turned out. <laughs> yeah, plenty of pregnant. I'm not sure how many people would agree with you on how I turned out. Sykes, doesn't everybody say that they're not gonna do what their parents did and then they, they turn out just like them? Allie, moms have been raising babies for centuries and you got all these books you've checked out and the magazines that you bought and the horrible talk shows you've been watching. Hey. We'll figure it out, okay? And listen, worst case, if we got questions, we find somebody who has the answers. The uh, nurse who was doing the ultrasound today, she's a mom of two and she was, she was awesome. She gave me her number. See, great. Call her. Take her coffee, pick her brain. 
she invite us to uh, go to church? Huh. I mean, some churches have mommy groups that women can go to, or like a, a mommy's day out program. It might, it might be a really good way to, to get some help. Does it start early on Sundays? Because, you know, I like to sleep in. It's not all you like to do on Sunday mornings. <laughs> hey, look, I'm not the Anyways, only one. Anyways, your days of sleeping in are coming to an abrupt halt, mister. I can't do this alone. I really think it might be a good idea if we start going. OK. Thank you, sweetheart. Well, I do have to finish this crib, otherwise this kid's not going to have a place to sleep. Yeah, it looks like you're pretty much done to me. Yeah, does it? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I need you to install the car seat. Seriously, we can't. I'm here to pick up Kate, yeah. uh, Morris. Um, I'm afraid Katie was a little out of hand this morning. She hit two of the other children with wooden blocks. I'm so sorry. Oh, we tried to get her to calm down, but she doesn't seem to understand that you cannot throw wooden blocks at other people, including me. So I thought you might want to address that. Of course. You know our policy is if kids keep hitting, then we have to have a parent stay with them during the service, or else the child has to sit with mom and dad in a um, big church until their next birthday. Completely understand. Um, I I'll talk with my husband, and it, it won't happen again. Okay, thank you. Mommy, mommy, I'm gonna be an assassin when I grow up. And then, and, and I'm not gonna have a name, so the police can't find me, then I'm gonna hack into the computer and I'm gonna steal all the government secret plans, and then I'm gonna build up a Death Star and then destroy all the monsters in the ocean. Hey, Mommy, what do you want for your birthday? For you to not be a complete screw up for one day, buddy! Change her real quick, okay? And then I'll come check the things. Oh, that's that's awful. Mm. Um why oh, swear. Oh Kate. Stop. Stop. 
stop moving. You've done hey. enough. Hey, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, I got this. I don't want you changing it when you're upset. Okay, well, you locked yourself in the bathroom and said you needed help, so I'm helping. I just needed a minute. I can do my job. Thank you. Hey, hey Teresa and Kenneth are going to be here at 6.30. How long do burgers take? Perfect night for company. Like 30 minutes. I'll get into it. Hey, one more thing. Can you come back here for a minute? Sure. Tonight, we need to talk about Kate. She was, I guess, hitting other kids in church yesterday, and they said that they might have to actually kick her out of nursery. Kick her out of nursery? That's crazy. She's two. That's what two years. Yeah, well, let's just, let's just talk about it tonight after they have left. <sighs> Kate and Ron have been running the house lately, and it is, it, it is wearing me out. I'm sure it's a phase. She'll grow out of it. Talk to Teresa about it. I don't think it's a phase. The other kids are not hitting each other. And we are her parents. We're supposed to fix things like this. I, I don't want to talk to Teresa. I want to talk to you about it. I want to talk to my husband. I want to hear your ideas. I, I cannot do everything by myself. OK, we'll talk about it. Great. I'm so glad you're interested in your kids' lives. Quiet out here. Yeah, I know. Kind of nice, isn't it? Yeah, tell me about it. With three under six, the sound of nothing can be pretty sweet. Honestly, I don't know how you guys do it. Ronnie and Kate are almost too much for Allie as it is. What about you? Oh, I'm fine with two. No, I'm talking about the stress. Does it get to you? Just tune it out. I know, man, but they didn't work and come home, I gotta unwind. You don't think Alice is tired, too? I'm sure she is, but on a quick trip, so just, I don't know, takes it out of me, man. Well, look, man, I get it, all right? When it comes to raising kids, the days are long, but the years are short. Not short enough, if you ask me. Do you remember the challenge that Pastor Mark gave us on Sunday? No, I was out of town. You were out of town. Well, look, he uh, quoted some guy that said, children are the living messages that we send forth to a time that we will not see. You should get the tape. He talks about giving a vision for what God might have for your kids. Something more than hoping that they grow up happy and healthy and get a good job and get married. Oh, I think I burnt these. Yeah, I hear you, man. You got me to realize that our kids aren't the problem. It's us, man. Yeah, uh, you and me, that's right. I'm the problem. Remember that verse that says, without a vision, the people will perish? Can't say that I do. Well, it applies to the family as well. You can't run around living life one day at a time. You got to know where you're going, and then lead. All right. All right. Give me that ball. Uh. Literally pulls up from half court. And he makes it, just acts like this is something I do all the time. It was ridiculous. I saw the replay of that on the news. It was unbelievable. unbelievable. It was. Yeah, it was crazy. Excuse me. Yes, sir. I finished my food. I'm getting popsicle. Miss Alice, John David has a question for you. Yes, John David? I please get popsicles? Of course you can. They're in the freezer on the bottom shelf. Okay. Mm -hmm. Your little man has become quite the gentleman. I want a popsicle, too. You can have one when all of your food's gone, buddy. But I can't eat it. It's too much food. I want a popsicle like John David. Son, your mother gave you an answer. You cannot have dessert until you finish your food. Sit down. Finish your food. Do you... Might I try something? Go ahead. Now, Ronnie, you know your plate has to be empty before you go get dessert, right? Right? Looks like your plate's all empty, hon. I guess that means you get dessert. Can I get a popsicle now? Yes, you may. Thank you for asking. My dad did that with me once. Never forgot it. 
That's the picture of grace, he would say. Getting what you don't deserve because somebody else did what you should have done for you. You just wanted to eat more hamburger, man. Don't be. Don't get all spiritual on me over there. <laughs> you just remember that the next time you're making these hamburgers out there. We got more if you need it. <laughs> you don't have to eat my kids' food all the time. Bring him a popsicle. <laughs> Steal my kids' hamburger, man. Just five more minutes, and I'll help you with those dishes. Oh, no, 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 no. You sit and rest. No, I can't have you doing all the extra. Why do you want to like... say no? Did you hear us talking? Excuse me, Mama. You're excused. Ronnie wants to know, Kim, may, may I play Frogger with him? What's that? Oh, it's just this little video game of the frogs trying to, like, cross the road. It's, it's totally harmless. Yes, you can play Froggy with Ronnie. <laughs> it's Frogger, Mommy. <laughs> But well, whatever it's called, yes, you can play for about 10 minutes, and then we gotta go. Thank you. My mom says I can't play. <laughs> Kids. <laughs> hey, I'm sorry about Ronnie tonight. What for? It's his manners, or his lack of manners, I should say. Well, how does he normally act? I don't know, I guess... I guess I just don't notice it, you know, when it's just him and Kate, but... I don't know why he just seems to always decide to act up whenever we have company around. John David used to be just the same. Really? Mm-hmm. It took us weeks to get him to learn basic table manners. Because you know, ain't no kid gonna say things like please and thank you on their own. <laughs> yeah, well, you're gonna have to uh, lend me whatever book you used to train him. Oh, you already got it, honey. And it's all in there. In the Bible. Oh, well. I guess I missed the chapter on manners. Well, how much time do you spend reading Proverbs or memorizing verses? I mean, I have all my kids learn Proverbs 23, 13, and 14 as soon as they're old enough to talk. Do not withhold discipline from your children. Whom the Lord loves, he disciplines. Yeah, but I just... I don't know that I can intentionally hurt my child, though. Alice, listen. Some of the greatest lessons in life come amidst pain. If there's no sting, then what you get is a spoiled child. And I know you don't want that. Hi. Your son is watching you play that game. Can you take him in the other room with you? I have to run a bath for Kate. Can you not just pause your game and please deal with him? Hey, boy, why don't you go put your pajamas on, brush your teeth, and I'll, I'll come pray with you in a minute, okay? Why? Because it's time to go to bed. Gotta, gotta... Why can't I just watch for a few more minutes? Buddy, this is a grown-up game, okay? I told you that before. Now, please, you gotta go to bed. Why? Son, go to bed now, please. I cannot believe you. Come on. I'm sure that you both realize that Ronnie's very bright. We've been tracking his test scores over the past four years, and he's in the 97th percentile in reading and language. He's in the 99th percentile in math. He's in the 99th percentile in science. So even though Ronnie's a freshman, we would like to encourage you to have him start taking the SAT now and once a year every year. I don't want to create any false expectations, but students with these kinds of early scores often go on to become national merit scholars. I'd imagine he'll have his pick of college options. And many of those options will likely come with some very generous scholarships attached. You both should be very proud. 99th percentile. Did you have any idea he was that smart? I knew he got good grades and didn't have to work at it very hard. <laughs> what do you think? Free college? I, yeah, I'm into it. You know how he's been skipping youth group saying that he needed to study? This whole time I thought he was making excuses because it's boring and the, the leaders tell him, treat him like he's in sixth grade, but he's actually been studying. Like, he's really smart. 
Yeah. It's a free college, Mark. I'm not sure we'll get that lucky with Kate or Josh or Faith. See you at home. Love you. What are you doing with my mask sword set? Mom said I could use a Lego spittle fort for a freckle. That doesn't mean you take apart a mask sword to build some stupid fort. It's not stupid, and Mom said I could. She didn't say that, no, give it back. Mom said I could play with it. She's not your real mom anyway. Yes, she is. Nuh-uh, your real mom couldn't handle you. That's not true. That's what Mom told me when we got you. She did not. Uh-huh. Here, take your stupid Legos. They're stupid anyway. Mom! Hey, you on your way? No, I'm not. I'm still at the office. Hey, how was your day? How late? How was your day is code for I'm going to be late, so just tell me how late. Okay, well, I, I do have another couple hours of work to do on the Wilson project, and then I, I should be able to get free. Charlie, really? Listen, I know, but uh, if I work hard, I can get it done by Friday, and then no more late nights for a while. Yeah, well, I think this is, what, the 10th project? You've said that on now? Hey, are you okay? No. No, not really. Josh and Faith had a big fight today, and Josh said some really horrible things to her. Like what? Like that I'm not her real mom. She's not little anymore, and I, and I don't know how to talk to her about her mom and why she ultimately gave her up. I need you to be home before Josh goes to bed so that you can talk with him. He ignores me. He needs to hear it from you. And I, and I don't know what to say to Faith either, so maybe we can do that together. Yeah, okay. Love you. Kids, dinner! Is Dad home yet? Um, that was, that was him on the phone. Um, he's, he's stuck on a project, so he's not gonna be back until late. He was supposed to take me to the mall tonight. Yeah, well, I don't think that's gonna happen, sweetie. I'm sorry. Can I call Dad and see if we can go? Yes, but, um... We need to eat dinner first. Please go get the others. Tell them that it's time to eat. Okay. Ronnie, Josh, Faith, dinner. <sighs> Laundry belongs in the bin, not next to the bin. Oh. Seem to make babies faster than I can pick up their laundry. How do you make babies? What? What? We're not talking about this. Go get your PJs on. But I need to go potty. Then go potty. What you reading? Something for a class? Nope, just for fun. Hey, on Saturday, um, I was planning on going to a concert downtown with some friends. What show? Uh, it's a band called Neil Fit. Are they Christian? Kind of. Their band name is Latin for Nothing Comes. And their music has some spiritual themes. Okay, who would you be going with? I don't think you know them. Justin Booth and Franklin Hauser. They're juniors, so they can give me a ride to the show. I think that should be fine, but let me just... Let me just talk with your dad before I let you know, okay? Okay. Night. Good night. No, Daddy, it's Katie Buck. It's okay. I know you have really important things to do. I know the fair is Saturday. Do you think we could go? Thanks, Daddy. She's putting everyone to bed. Love you too, Daddy. Turn it off. Okay. Put it up. Okay. Here you go. So I want to talk to you about the things that you said to your little sister today. 
I was just kidding with her. Honey, it's it's not kidding if you tell her that I'm not her real mommy. Well, you're not. That's what you told me. Well, I'm not her birth mom. Yes, but I am her real mommy. God had her planned for our family before she was even born. Well, why didn't he put her in your tummy? <laughs> God just has different plans sometimes, that's all. Look, sweetie, I know that having a sister can be very, very frustrating. But Faith needs you to be a good big brother. Well, me and her don't even like the same things. Well, that's okay. Maybe you can help her with things. You know, you could maybe teach her cursive because you're really good at your letters. Or you could show her games on your iPad. Or maybe show her pictures and tell her stories about our family. I can show the place in the garage. Dad put a hole in the wall when we were moving in. Yes. Yeah, you, you, could, you could definitely show her that. You know what you need to do first, though? What? You need to tell her that you're very sorry and ask her to forgive you for the things you said. Remember how to do that? What do you say first? I say sorry. You say I'm sorry for? I'm sorry for what I said. I was wrong. Well, Will you please forgive me? And then what do you do? Then I give her a hug. Perfect. We'll do that first thing in the morning, OK? OK. Night, little buddy. Good night, Mom. Sleep good. Josh, your shoes are by the door. Hurry up. Sweetie, we got to leave in five minutes. I've got an appointment at the office at 9. Is your lunch almost packed? Almost. Who are you texting this early in the morning? It's a friend. And her name is? His name is Adam, Lauren's older brother. Hey, Adam can wait five minutes until your lunch is packed and we're in the car. Hey, hey. morning, baby. How you doing? Did you sleep good? Did you sleep good? Did you sleep good? Did you sleep good? Hey, sweetheart. Hey, Dad. Hey, babe, I gotta run. Um, I know I said I'd pick up the kids later, but I'm, I'm probably gonna have to work late. Hey. I know, I'm finishing it, though, so this will be the last time for a while. Yeah, well, you said that last week. I mean it today. Okay, we'll just be off tomorrow. The girls are counting on you. Oh, I wouldn't miss the fair with my girls. You excited? Yeah. Faith is coming? Yeah. Dad and the girls at the fair. It's gonna be great. What do you think, Faith? You think we should get Kate to ride the teacups with us? Yeah. You know what? You guys can just go ride the teacups together. Um. I'm gonna just go with some friends from school. It's probably a better idea anyway. Well, I'll be in the car. What's that about? Teacups. She loves teacups. I realize that she is 12 now. Hey, come on. Lunch, lunch, let's go. Come on, come on. Josh, we're in the car. Yeah, I had them checked yesterday. They said they're fine. Yep, spare too. Yeah, I know. We can Skype. I'll be home in like 11 weeks. Mm -hmm. All right, you too. See ya. Is that Dad? Mm. Yep. You know, he tried to take a later flight so he could be here. No big deal. He was here for the party last night. Yeah, well, I can't believe that. They wouldn't let him miss a meeting so that he could be here to see his firstborn son off to college. Mom, it's not a big deal. Hey, you need help with your stuff? Got it. You know, your dad and I keep thinking that Dunwood is a mistake. 
You had your choice of a dozen schools. I, I don't see why you had to pick the most extreme. Mom, look, I know this is hard for you letting go, but you've done your job. You raised me, okay? I stayed out of trouble, I got the grades, I got the full scholarship, tuition, room and board. You did good, okay? What do you want these? Um, passenger seat. Yeah, you're looking through all my stuff. I was just looking at your baby picture and... It's just a book, okay? I mean, you... You can't really know what you believe until you've read all the sides. And he teaches at Dunwood? I'm not gonna do this again with you, okay? The decision is made. Classes start on Thursday. Would you let it go? Ronnie, what are you... Mom, let it go! Have your registration, everything in your glove compartment? That belongs to Matt. He put it there the other night. He just asked me to keep it for a few days. And you were just going to drop it off by his house on your way out on Monday morning? Exactly, so... You are not leaving this driveway with drugs in your car. Do you have any more of this stuff in here? Are you done? When your father finds out about this. Yeah, okay, whatever. <laughs> hey, you guys know where to find me, right? Look me up sometime. Reed Hall, room 517. Bye, Mom. Close the door. I did too, Katie. Uh, I should probably go before my parents suspect anything. Oh. Just stay a little while longer. Uh, I don't know. I just don't want to get caught. Your parents are probably in red. Uh, yeah. Come on. I just... I should probably go. You know he hasn't lost his phone. He just doesn't want to talk to us. It's been three days. He'll cool off or call us back. Yeah, well, I think he's an atheist. And it's not just about the book. He's a teenager. He's confused. I read all kinds of books when I was his age. You hear that? Hun, should I, should I call the police? No, I'll check it out.
Wait. Matt, you all right? I'm fine. You okay? Who was that? Yes, I'm fine. Who was that? Did he hurt you? Hey, look at me. Are you okay? Are you okay? Yes, I'm fine, Dad. Yes. Come here, come here. What is going on? Sit down. Answer your mother. Kate, I snuck out on a date. What else? Excuse me? What else happened? She snuck out on a date with a boy who pushed her out of his car. He did what? Who is this person? What? You don't know him. Oh, I'm gonna know him. That is not what I asked, Missy. Who is he? His Catherine. Name, his name is Mike. He's in college. College? Mommy, I need water. Katie, he's in college? <coughs> Katie, I am not happy about this. I need medicine. You're not through. Come on. Where's your cup? <coughs> I had your medicine right by your bed. Did you not take it? It's gone. I don't know where it is. This isn't the first time you've done this, is it? No. Well, it's the last time. Are you grounded? Your mom and I will talk about for how long? Typical. What did you say? Look, Mike's a good guy. This is the first time anything has happened. Good guys don't push people out of their car, Katie. Yeah, well, I can take care of myself. Really? Like tonight? Yeah. Well done. Like tonight, and like every other night when you're at work and mom's at home taking care of Faith and Josh by herself. I'm fine. I picked you up! Off the sidewalk! Kate, does that sound fine to you? No, this is going nowhere. Sit down! Look, can you just I'm leave me alone? I'm not done talking to you! Just leave me alone! How come I didn't know about this boy? Because we've been giving her space. I feel like all I've heard for the past two years is, Mom, give me space. Yeah, well, look where space got us. I still don't know how to run out. We need help, Charlie. I can fix this. OK, then. What's your plan? I'm going to spend some time with her, some one-on-one -on -one time, some real time. With Kate and the other kids, I can, you know, really make an effort, which I haven't. And I can go back. Hey, we've tried that. Please, we need something that's going to last more than two weeks. It will. I'm serious. I think the only reason that Kate is still here is because she is too young to leave. She's going to brush you off just like she does me. She wants less of us in her life, not more. Honey, we have got to get help. We have two more coming up after her. And she's falling right after Ronnie. And they're going to follow right after her. Started drifting away and, and doing his own thing. And I just thought it was normal, young adolescence stuff. I know our jobs as parents is to make sure our kids are well taken care of and, and keep them out of trouble, right? Yeah. Teresa and I began to realize that maybe we had our priorities all wrong. Look, we were looking at the spiritual development of our children as only a part of their lives, but not the centerpiece. I mean, we cared more about how they acted than we did about teaching them what loving and trusting and walking with Jesus every day looks like. What they learned from us was how to stay away from sin. Don't mess up. And if you do, don't, don't, don't tell anybody or else you'll be in big trouble. Maybe told them how to hide their sin rather than confess it. <laughs> they never saw us confessing anything. I can't get my kids to talk to me, let alone confess anything, so. 
here is your catfish and fries for you and catfish and slaw for you. You guys need anything else? We're good. Thank you. Okay, enjoy. Teresa and I were talking the other night, and she thinks that we think that maybe it'd be a good idea for the uh, four of us to get together and go to that new parenting series at church. I just... I know, I know we'll probably be the oldest ones in the group, all right? But it can't hurt to sit in on a few sessions now, can it? <laughs> okay. Yeah? Yeah, I'll do it. Let's do it. Good. Good. Now, now can you pray with the food so I can eat my catfish, please? Sure. <laughs> uh, God, thank you for the food and for friends. And our kids. Thanks for doing this. Hey. Excuse me. It's okay. Come on in. Let's get this started. We want to welcome you to the Art of Parenting video series presented by Family Life. And here's what the schedule's gonna look like. We're gonna watch a video for about half hey. an hour, take some notes. Here we go. We'll break out into some mini sessions. I think most parents in America say, I want my kids to be happy and or I want them to be successful. And I feel like, oh my gosh, that's not good enough. Happiness is just an emotion that comes and goes. What does happiness look like? Um, it's kind of difficult to answer. Okay, can you come down here for a minute? Yeah, uh, one sec. Yeah, what's up? Have a seat. Uh, okay. Well, your mom and I um, have come to realize that our faith and believing in God needs to be more than just going to church on Sundays or praying before we go to sleep. That God doesn't just need to be a part of our life, but that he needs to be the center of it. What does that mean? That's a good question. And honestly, I'm, we're still trying to figure that out, too. Well, I think for most of our marriage, we have, we've tried to do the right thing. And we figured that if we were, we were doing that, if everything was going OK, that, that we were on track. Yeah, we, we just we thought we just had to do our best and turn to God when things aren't working or you get stuck. But that's not the way it is. We've been learning a lot about this book, the Bible, and that this is what God wants us to spend time in every day so that we can learn more about him. This is how he teaches us about himself, and this is how we learn his plan for us. Jesus said that we, we need God's word more than we need food. Nuh-uh. Yeah, yeah, I know, it's, it's, it's hard to believe, but it's true. You know, our souls hunger for these words the way that our body hungers for food. I want us as a family to start spending time every single day reading the Bible together. 
I try to read my Bible sometimes, but there's a lot of words in there that I don't know what they mean. <laughs> I understand. You know, there's a lot of words in here that I don't know what they mean either, but I bet if we dive in together, we can figure it out. Okay? I tell you what, why don't we start, why don't we start now? Go get your Bibles and we'll dive in and just read a few verses and, and, and go from there, okay? Go ahead. See if this does any good. Honey, you're doing great. We just have to remember that our job is to be faithful. Change is up to God. Yeah. Hey, you got a minute? I messed up. Um, I haven't been as involved in your life as I should have been. <laughs> you have grown into a beautiful young woman. And somewhere along the way, I quit being your dad. You know, when you were little, I knew what to do. We would go get ice cream. I would just push you on the swing. Why well, you said, higher, Daddy, higher. And then you stopped wanting to go to the park, you know? And I guess I just I started to think maybe my job was over. That was wrong. That was really wrong. You were on that side of the other night. Because of me. I wasn't here for you. Stop protecting you. Will you forgive me? I'm so sorry. I forgive you, Dad. <laughs> I have something to say to you, too. I'm sorry I snuck out with Mike. <laughs> I knew that it was wrong. I just... <sighs> it was nice to have a guy paying attention to me. Making me feel special. I know it caused you guys a lot of stress. <sighs> Can you forgive me too? Buds. Buds. Pals. Pals. VFFs. Okay, nobody says that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what do they say now? Uh, I don't know, like dudes. Dudes. <laughs> don't call me that. <laughs> Ice cream date. Check my calendar. I have to check your calendar. Yeah. Okay, pencil me in. <laughs> Here, try this. Okay. That's amazing. Thanks. Yeah, no, I'm actually I'm really impressed. I still need to try it with less garlic, I think. Or add it in earlier. How old are you? I'm 10, Dad. You're 10? Oh, that's right, that's right. 
Because you're talking like you're 35. <laughs> you know, I think we should try to find a way for you to make some money doing this. For real? Yeah. How? Well, I have an idea. You know how mom goes to Bible study on Monday nights at the church? Mm-hmm. What if you made dinner for the family every That'd Monday? That'd be awesome. Yeah? Now, we'd have to plan ahead, make sure you have what you need. Okay. But I'm thinking if you cook for everybody and you clean everything up, I'd be willing to give you $5 a week to do that. How about $10 a week? <laughs> Are you negotiating with me already? Yeah. No, no, no. I'm going to stick at 5 Okay. For now. But if you made extra, then we could take some to Mr. McBride from church as well. I bet he'd love to have a meal cooked from you, okay? Mm-hmm. That sound good? Yeah. Yeah? Are you excited? Yeah. Okay. Keep going. I want to eat more. Good, man. Number five, what have you done to show your children that they are special and unconditionally loved? <laughs> well, I've been spending some time with Josh, helping him with his cooking. He's pretty good. How's it been for you? Hard. At first. You know, he, um, I guess I never really looked at cooking as something that men did. But I, I am learning that I can't make him what I want him to be. Well, how's it been for him? He's, he's really opening up. It's been really good. What are you working on? Katie's arrow. No, 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 no. You're not gonna, you're not gonna copy off of my work. I thought we were supposed to do this together. Uh, ultimately, yes, but I would really, I think that we should each do our own first draft. And I see what you're, I see what you're doing here. Whatever, whatever you come up with, I'll be so fine. Mm hmm yes, but that's, you're not gonna get out of your homework that easy. Gosh, you're no fun. I'm fun sometimes. I heard that she's considered insensitive, and something that I want to work on her with is cultivating a sense of belonging. I have a faith as inventive and persistent. <laughs> she is. She is. So, uh, your handsome son is nowhere to be found, so I guess you have to call me in on my day off. Kenneth. How's it going? It's good. No, Josh actually is doing all of the food for the wedding. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> That's great. He's just making pasta, but he's very excited about it. Yeah, you know, he's always been the best cook out of both of our families. I don't know why I didn't see that. Don't tell Teresa, though. <laughs> OK. <laughs> Well, you got three summers left with him. Not enough time, if you ask me. Zero left with Kate. 
Thank you. <laughs> well, you, at least you got two extra summers out of it with her. God has restored beyond repair. That is his specialty. You're telling me. <laughs> this hey, get everything unloaded. Unloaded, set up. you know besides this picture Kate was looking around and um, before she could tell it looked like Ronnie didn't even know he was a dad and until like a couple weeks ago looks like the mom dropped the little guy off with him at his place where's that it's a place in Oregon did you call did you call him yeah I left a message what'd you say nothing nothing out of the ordinary you know I didn't I didn't let on that that I had seen the picture or anything. Honey, you okay? I have a grandson. <laughs> or grandparents. Those are the only pictures that we have. You have any reason to think that we'll be, it's gonna be there at the wedding, you think? No. Pray for our, we pray for our boy. You don't know where he is, Father, but you do. And God, we thank you for the blessing of a grandson. A grandson, Father. And we pray that you will protect him from any harm or evil that may come his way, God, and somehow. somehow that he would come to know you at a young age, that he would learn to love you and to walk with you and to trust you with his whole life. Father, we pray again for our boy, honey, Father. My boy. Bring him home. Father, bring him home. Help him see the folly of his sin, Father, and the reality of your love, and the reality of our love. It's in your son's name we pray. Amen. We have a grandson. Ah. <laughs> ah. Oh. Oh. Uh, hey, this is Ronnie. I can't get to the phone right now. Honey. Leave me a message. Honey, if you're going to talk to Brad, you need to go do it now. I don't think he's coming. He's on the right. <laughs> Come here. Mm. I'm not supposed to be touching your dress. <laughs> it's okay. Listen. 
Today is a big day for Daddy. He probably won't show it, but on Monday when you guys are back at home and I'm not there, he'll probably try to act like he's not sad. But he'll be sad. A little sad. He only has one little girl at home now, and that's you. But I'm not a little girl anymore. You are to him. Even though you're 13, he's still gonna need those hugs from you. He needs to know you haven't gotten too cool for him, okay? <laughs> <laughs> and when you get to be my age, and you meet a cute boy, just like Rick, who loves Jesus, and he asks you to marry him, you make sure you get daddy's blessing before you run off and get married. And remember, whoever you marry has to want to live no more than 30 miles from mom and dad. Really? <laughs> I'm kidding. But help your dad. Ladies? Excuse me, miss. Um, have you seen my daughter Kate anywhere? <laughs> No, 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 this can't, this can't be her. This is an angel. <laughs> you look gorgeous. Thank you, Daddy. Hey, um, Faith, can you give us a minute? Why don't you go see if you can help Mommy? Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> Are you ready for all this? Because we can call this thing off. Dad. Right now. Dad. So, Ronnie, Dad, I don't think it's... I know, it's okay. We'll just keep praying for them. For both of them now. Okay, I just, I Dad, want to... I'm not going to let this steal the joy of this day. And you shouldn't either. Hey, sorry to interrupt. Kate, honey, they need you out front before the guests arrive. Tell them I'll be right there. You go. You sure? Yeah, we can talk later. Everything look okay, Mom? You look perfect, honey. Come on, I'll walk you out. Okay. Love you. I love you too. Love you too. Catherine Grace Morris, now Catherine Grace Johnson, is a testament to the saving grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Having received this blessing from the Lord 20 years ago, I have faithfully taught her to love God with all of her heart, soul, and strength. Catherine has proved herself to honor God and authority to live responsibly, to hunger and thirst for righteousness, to be a proper helpmeet, to seek reconciliation and forgive quickly, to obey the Lord and all his holy will. I hereby give thanks and praise to God for this blessing. And in the presence of our Lord, I declare to God be the glory. I also declare that on this day, Catherine Grace Johnson, you know, given to me by God as an arrow in my quiver, is hereby released into the world, now in the hands and the direction of her husband, 
on mission for the Lord, by the Lord, and of the Lord to make a difference for him in our generation. May she be the mother of tens of thousands and her legacy continually bless future generations for the glory of God. Amen. It's Kate, again. Just calling to see if you're going to make it to Mom and Dad's 50th next week or not. I talked to your son, Tim, and he and Elizabeth are coming. Ronnie, listen. You don't want to get a voicemail at some point and learn that one of them is gone, and you never... I don't know. Just come, okay? in the world have you done? My internationally acclaimed strawberry French toast made from an old family recipe that I dug up online about 20 minutes ago. <laughs> I bet the kitchen is a disaster. Ah, in the half hour it will be spotless. No, I'll take care of it once I eat no. this beautiful breakfast. Your son would be so proud. <laughs> Josh would be surprised that I can cook anything for breakfast besides Pop-Tarts. Do they still make those things? I have no idea. Well, anyway, this looks a lot better than Pop-Tarts. Whatever inspired you to make me such a special breakfast? I have no idea. I was just sitting at the kitchen table reading Joshua 9. Oh, is that so? Happy 50th. You're the only woman I've ever loved. Oh, my Charlie. You're the only man I've ever loved. Well, you should go ahead and eat before uh, my world-famous French toast gets cold. <laughs> okay. Mm. Great guys, let's put out the first 30 or so. We'll ice the rest of them, pull them out of the fridge as needed. Right. <laughs> Hooray, you're here! Oh, <laughs> it is so good to see you. Oh. You guys are so grown up. Say hello to your aunt Kate. Hello, Ryan. <laughs> Dad, hey, it's good to see you. Hey, Mom, oh, you look great. Oh, thank you. Look at all this food. Josh, we could feed everybody for a month with all this. I mean, we're going to have some leftovers, but that's no problem. We'll take care of it. I think you may have gone over the budget that I gave you. Well, actually, uh, we are far under budget. This is my gift to you guys. John. Yes, yeah. Uh, and I, no, no, listen, how often does a caterer get to serve his parents on their 50th anniversary? Dad, I know you did something special for Mom, right? He brought me breakfast in bed this morning. Oh, really? That's impressive. Cornflakes? I have you know, I made strawberry French toast. And your mom gave the meal a 10. I gave it an A for effort. <laughs> I really think the reason he cooked for me this morning was because he knew he was going to be accountable to you today. Not so. Not so. <laughs> Ronnie's calling. Ronnie? Hey, sis. Um, I missed the first flight, but got on a follow-on. Sorry I missed your calls. But you're on your way. Yeah, I'll be there. Ronnie? Yeah, Kate. I'm sorry that... Don't mind any of that. 
Today is about mom and dad. I haven't even told them you're coming yet. I'll surprise them. Okay. I'll see you soon. started soon. These kids aren't going to last all night. Yeah, you're probably right. Um, I'll get Dad to do the blessing. Okay, thanks. Cold out there. Hey, Ronnie. I'm Rick. I'm Kate's husband. Guess I missed the dinner. <laughs> Trust me, there's plenty of food left over. Everyone's inside, and they're just now starting to share their tributes, so come on. Um, listen, I, I don't want to interrupt what's going on. Is there a place where I can listen in without all of a sudden being the center of attention? <laughs> I'm way ahead of you. Got the perfect spot picked out. So in honor of your amazing 50 years together, your children decided to take a minute and let you know just how much you mean to us. We thought it best to find a way to preserve our thoughts for you. We decided to go in age order from youngest to oldest, and this is what they wrote. Mom and Dad, I have had many years to think of what my life might have been if you two had not made me a part of a forever family. I've read about the lives of the children who spend their childhood in orphanages. Chen and I know firsthand that even the best orphanages can never give a child all the things you gave me. Your whole life was about giving to our family. You gave us so much. But today I want to thank you for the three most important things you gave me. First, you gave me the gift of security. As a child, I knew that whatever happened in my day, even if it was a pesky bratty brother tormenting me, I would always have a mom and dad that would show me unconditional love. I remember the time when I was eight when I packed my little suitcase and I told you I was moving back to China. I remember you telling me, Mom, that you would leave my room the way it was, just in case things didn't work out for me in China. That's all I really wanted to hear. I never made it out the door. I had a home. You gave me a place to belong and a family to belong to. When people who could tell I looked different from my siblings would ask how long I'd been in the family, I remember you telling them, Dad, that God had determined I would be a Morris long before any of us were born. Even when I struggled with my identity as a teenager, you kept reminding me of what is true, that my identity isn't found in the color of my skin or the city where my birth parents lived. You taught me that my true identity is as a child of God. And that's the third gift you gave me. You gave me the gift of a living faith. You made sure we were all in church. You were dead. You were faithful to read the Bible to us. But the loudest sermon I heard growing up was the one both of you preached by the way you walked. I learned what it looks like to believe in God and walk with him every day by watching how you walked with him. I know my siblings were stunned when they found out that their adopted sister was actually your favorite child. <laughs> but I wasn't surprised at all. I knew it was true. So thank you for all the gifts you've given me. Chen and I pray that heritage you've given us will become a mighty legacy that will live for generations through our children and our children's children. I love you, Mom and Dad. Your daughter forever. Faith.
Well, I originally was going to title mine a uh, tribute from your favorite child. <laughs> but uh, I didn't want to crush faith with the truth. So I ended up calling it, here's to my imperfect but faithful parents from your very imperfect son. In the Bible, the Apostle Paul said, I am who I am by the grace of God. And I can say the same, except I have a second part to that phrase. I am who I am by the grace of God and because of the faithfulness of my mom and dad. My parents learned early that their third born was stubborn and strong-willed. Dad, I remember you used to love telling people that when I was a child, I drew a circle around myself and called myself the Lord of the Ring. But we both knew that there was more truth there than either of us wanted to admit. But I think the biggest lesson I learned from you as you tried to redirect all my rambunctious impulses was that in the end, people matter more than things. Relationships matter more than always having to be right. And love matters most. And you both taught me that by how you faithfully loved your sometimes hard to love son. So in the end, that will be your legacy. And there could be no greater legacy than a legacy of faithful love. I love you too very much. Your son, Josh. I'm proud of you, son. I know, Dad. Thank you. You make it sound harder than it was. <laughs> Your memory's failing you all. <laughs> so I decided not to include in my tribute about being the favorite child because, you know, that was our secret. And I know how to keep a secret. <laughs> so Faith and Josh, I am sure you are really the favorite children. <laughs> my tribute is called My Two Moms and Dads. When I was 15, I got a new mom and dad. My, my old mom and dad, um, they were loving and kind, caring and gentle. My new mom and dad, um, well, they were also loving and kind, but I didn't realize it at the time. I, in fact, didn't care for my uh, new parents all that much. They uh, put new boundaries in place. They said no to things that they normally said yes to. But there was something about this new set of parents. They uh, didn't rattle easy. They had an inner peace. They had new priorities. And they calmly and quietly went about reshaping our family. And in that process, they showed me what it means to live my life in Jesus. Instead of trying to find a place for Jesus in my life, Mom and Dad, I can't express to you how grateful I am for all the fun times, the love, the memories, and most of all, the model that you showed me how to walk humbly with your God. I love you. Your daughter, Kate. Well, before we cut the cake, there's something I want to say about it. Uh, we wanted to do something very special for mom and dad. Josh, I realize I'm kind of late. 
here tonight. Like about uh, 30 some odd years late. And Kate said something uh, about tributes when I talked to her last. I guess I probably didn't listen all that carefully to her. It's been an issue uh, of mine over the years, not listening to what other people were telling me. Oh, but I don't want to take the spotlight off where it belongs. Um, Mom and Dad. Um, I think I remember reading once, Hear my son, your father's instructions. And forsake not your mother's teaching. Back then, I didn't listen uh, too well to much of anything other than my own perceived intelligence and upperclassmen or my instructors whose approval I was craving at the time. <clears throat> um, I am glad that my own son him and his wife Elizabeth are able to be here today. I guess it's about time that they uh, met y'all and y'all met them, uh, especially since Tim has just taken a new job at Fort Mill. And son, I'm glad. you're going to finally get a chance to meet your grandmother and grandfather and get to know them. I should have. Years ago. someone coming on Monday to do this. It's your anniversary. I'm just rinsing a few dishes. You know me. I can't leave a dirty kitchen. Uh, okay, I know I'm not going to win an argument with you. Mm -hmm. Are you okay? Mm-hmm. Ronnie's going to stay at the house. This is a good thing? Yeah. It's good. It's really good. Well, listen, if you're going to do dishes, then uh, you need to do them right. <laughs> We're about to head home. I just wanted to say goodbye and how thankful we both are to finally get to meet you and Grandpa. no idea how thrilled your grandma and I are that you're going to be moving just right down the road in Fort Mill. We're going to have to have you over. Mm -hmm. Better yet, we need to give you two a night off and get to know your kids better. Yes. Wow, that's very kind of you. Thank you. Truth is, I have so many questions I'd love to ask you. Sometimes I just don't know what to do with the little ones. Oh, honey, I understand. When Ronnie was born, 
I was so scared. I didn't have a clue what I was doing. Bye-bye. 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 So they took the baby Jesus and they wrapped him in swaddling clothes and they laid him in a manger. <laughs> what are you doing? Tell them the story. Now there were shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And suddenly, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were so afraid. The angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy.